Welcome friends to the new episode of the Microbiology Tube. So today we are going to learn about the thin layer chromatography. So you know about the chromatography. So the chromatography are the separation technique in which the mixture of the compounds are separated into a single compound by using a technique. So today we are going to learn about the thin layer chromatography. So let's talk about the thin layer chromatography. So first the thin layer chromatography is also called the liquid and solid chromatography. So this is called the liquid solid chromatography. So why it is called the liquid and solid chromatography? So it is called the liquid and solid chromatography because the liquid are the mobile phase. So the mobile phase is the liquid. So whereas the stationary phase are the solid so the stationary phase are the solid so this is called the liquid and solid chromatography so this is also called the planar chromatography so this is also called the planar chromatography so why it is called the planar chromatography so it is called the planar chromatography because it is performed in the plane sheet so you know about the plane sheet the plane sheet may be the glass plate that may be the aluminium plate that may be the plastic plate so it is uh, made or it is made in the plane so that is called the planar chromatography so let's talk about some of the basic things of the thin layer chromatography. So in the thin layer chromatography there will be one stationary phase. The first thing will be the stationary phase. And the second thing will be the mobile phase. So this stationary phase and the mobile phase are responsible for the separations of the compound so based upon the polarity. So in this one, so what is the basis for the separations of the compound? So one is the polarity. So on the basis of the polarity, the compound will be separated. Next is the capillary action. So that is the capillary action of the solvent so due to the capillary action of the mobile phase and due to the polarity of the compounds so there is the separations of the compound so the stationary phase consists of the chemicals like that of the silica so silicas are the mainly used stationary phase in the thin layer chromatography so next is the alumina so the alumina is also used in the stationary phase so next will be the magnesium oxide so next will be the magnesium oxide so stars are also used as the stationary phase so the mobile phase can may be the inorganic solvents so you can choose the solvents according to your choice or on the basis of the polarity from the allotropic series so in the allotropic series there are a list of the uh, solvents so you can uh, you can select any of the solvents so if you are going to uh, do the stationary uh, to do the thin layer chromatography first you should the select the stationary phase so then after you should select the mobile phase. So the mobile phase may be the petroleum ether. That may be the ethanol. That may be the methanol. That may be the water. Or there are a lot of this, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of the mobile phase like the chloroform. So you can, you can, you know, select any of these things. So it do not have any rules for the separation, for the selections of the mobile phase. There is no any rule for the selections of the mobile phase. The selections of the mobile phase are usually done by looking at the literature review. Next, by doing the heat and trial methods. So you can select only one solvent from the electropic series or you can also make, make the mixture of the solutions. So first you have to look which is uh, which gives the good you know separations or the good resolution so you have to know that one. So in the mobile phase there is no any method for the selection. So you can use any of this uh, you can use any of this you know um, solvents. So the basically the selection is done by the literature review or that may that is done by the heat and trial method. So you can use any one solvent or you can use the mixture of the solvent in the mobile phase. 
So in the stationary phase, you, you use the silica powder or the aluminium or the magnesium or the stars. So what you do in this stationary phase? So firstly, these are the powder formed. So this powder formed have to be absorbed in some of the layer. So suppose this is the glass plate. This is the glass plate. You know. So now you have to make the you have to make the slurry of the silica. So you have to make the slurry of the silica. So first you make you uh, you uh, wet the silica and you make the silica slurry. After you make the silica slurry, you uniformly distribute the silica slurry into this glass plate. So what with the help of the TLC spreader, so with the help of the TLC spreader, with the help of the TLC spreader, you will uniformly distribute this silica. So you use that. Uh, you use the TLC spreader, you pour the silica slurry and you uniformly distribute all above this glass plate. So after you put the slurry, so you have to dry it, you know, you have to dry it and activate it. So what happens is that there may be some of, uh, some of this, you know, slurry that uh, may come that may have the own uniform distribution like this one so that may not have a straight line so at the tip there may be some of the non-uniform lines so for this what you have to do is that you can cut it with any of these you know rulers or any of the things so you make it uh, straight okay so you make it straight so in this way you can prepare the uh, you know the stationary phase so you know, while uh, while making that uh, silica slurry, so the silica had to bind with the silica. Sorry, silica has to bond with the this uh, support. You know, the, as I have already told you, the support may be the glass plate, that may be the plastic plate, or that may be the metal plate. So, but the the metal or the support should not react with the compound that is going to be separated. So the glasses are mainly inert. So we use the glass plate for the TLC. So after uh, you make the slurry, so you have to put the binder. So you have to put the binder. So binders are usually the calcium sulfate that is that is uh, added in the compositions of the 10 to 15 percent. So in the slurry, there will be the CaSO4, that is the calcium sulfate that acts as the binder. So this is the binder. So you can also add the zinc sulfate. So you can also add the zinc sulfate because it gives the fluorescence. So what happens is that whenever when you separate this compound, so it will give the fluorescence and what happens is that the plate will fluoresce, the plate will give the light so there will be the fluorescence and after the separation so suppose there is uh, the uh, the separations of the compound like this so in all parts there will be the lightening or there will be the light uh, but in the compound there will be the dark spots so in this way we can know where the compound is and we can know the stationary phase now how we separate the uh, compounds so firstly after making the TLC spreader sorting volume of the mixture you put the sorting volume of the mixture in the T in the uh, in the you know stationary phase or the plate so what you do is that firstly you have to make a line so you make the line not with the ink pen but with the pencil you make the line then after you put the sample here okay you put the sample here so this is the this is the chroma plate so this is called the chroma plate so next there will be the development chamber so development chambers are the chamber in which there is the mobile phase so here will be the mobile phase So this is the chroma plate. So in the chroma plate, so there is the sample that has been loaded. So here will be the chroma plate. So that consists of the 
that consists of the sample. So we put this chroma plate into the mobile phase. So we put this chroma plate into this one. So we put the chroma plate into uh, the stationary into the mobile phase. So we cover it with the uh, we cover this uh, development tank with the cover. So then after we left it for some while until this mobile phase come up to a certain point. So you can see the moment of the mobile phase from here to here. So if it uh, goes to the top so then after you have to take out this chroma plate. So you have to take out this chroma plate and you have to look and you have to first uh, dry it and you have to look it for the separations. So if you have incorporated the fluorescence then you can look after this chroma plate. So you can look after the chroma plate for the separations of the mixture. So how we can determine the compound in the chroma plate? So if you see, suppose this is the chroma plate. So after the, we have load the sample. So what happens is that after the separation or after uh, applying this chroma plate into the development tank, there will be the separations of the molecules or the compounds. So it will be separated. Suppose this is the mixture that consists of the A, B and the C compounds. So suppose this is the A compound, this is the B compound and this is the C compound. Similarly you have put the compound A and this is the compound B and this is the compound C. So the, the distance the A compound will travel is equal to this A compound. So it will travel here. So for the B compound it will travel here and the, for the C compound it will travel here. So based upon this we can determine which compound are there. So you have to also put the standard compound here. So now, so now the separation is on the basis of the retardation time. So retardation factor. So what is the retardation factor? So retardation factor. So retardation factor that is also called the area. So retardation factor is defined as the distance. The distance traveled by the distance traveled by compound to the distance between sample point and sample inoculation. So suppose the solvent has reached up to here. The solvent has reached up to here. So first we calculate the distance between the between this sample inoculation. So the point of the sample inoculation to the point A. So suppose this is the A, this is denoted by the small a. So you, tr you measure the distance from this uh, sample inoculation to the top of this point. So that is, that is, let that be the x. So the retardation triangle now, retardation factor will be the a by x. Note that the retardation factor will always be less than, so it will always be less than, one so because this is very small and this is very big so the retardation factor will always be less than one so this is the first point second point is that the retardation factor will have the no unit so it will have the no unit so in this way we can separate the compound in the uh, thin layer chromatography but how it is separated you should know about the principle so i have deal about some of the basic uh, procedure about the thin layer chromatography so how the separation takes place so first what happens is that you have the chroma plate so the chroma plate is you know the chroma plate is loaded with the mixer and you put it into, into the solvent system you put into the solvent system so I have already told you that the separation of this depends one upon the polarity. So next upon the 
capillary action so if there is the mobile phase the mobile phase will tend to move upward by the help of the capillary action so by the help of the capillary action the mobile phase will travel but will travel upward so during it uh, during the travel of the upward it will also travel the solvent or uh, this is the mixture so it will also travel the solvent so there are a lot of the compound so it will pull the compound upward so what is the obstacle now the obstacle is the polarity so if the compound is polar then it will attach with the polar silica if the compound is non-polar it won't attach with the silica and it will readily travel upward so one thing is the like dissolves the like so this is the one of the key factors you have to remember so as i have told, told, already told you the silica are the polar and here is the polar solvent but this is not polar than that one so this will be the less polar solvent than that of the stationary phase so here is the polar so whenever you inoculate the mixture of the sample the mixture may consist of the A, B, C so the A will be the more polar so it will be the uh, it will be the medium polar it will be a high polar, medium polar and it will be the low polar so there are three conditions so this is the high polar so what happens is that this is the less polar, the solvents are the less polar so the high polar A will bind to the silica so it will bind to the silica and this medium polar will less readily bind to the silica and this low compound or the low polarity compound will bind will bind less than that of the B compound so it means in this three compound so A compound has the more affinity with this silica polar silica B has a little bit uh, smaller than that of the so here the compound A is the more polar than that of the other compound so it will absorb or it will attach with this uh, silica cell. so so during the separation the compound A will travel the least distance because of the affinity with the silica so B compound have the less affinity with the silica and has the more affinity with the non polar or less polar solvent so it will travel a little more distance than that of the A so the B will travel here so in the C compound so it is it is the non-polar compound or it is the less polar so it will travel more distance because it doesn't have the affinity or it has the less affinity with the silica but it has the more affinity with the polar solvent so compound C will readily travel upward so the basic principle of the thin layer chromatography is the separations of the compound on the basis of the polarity and on the basis of the capillary action so the polarity is uh, depend upon the the polarity of the silica or the polarity of the stationary phase and the polarity of the uh, of the mobile phase so these are some of the basic things about the thin layer chromatography if you really like this video then please press the like button subscribe the video and share the video thank you